Scientists say they have found the holy grail of superconductors. I mean, what they've been looking for for decades, they have finally discovered it. This news is blowing up everywhere. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Great to have all of you. Scientists in Korea say they've discovered the first room temperature ambient pressure superconductor. Now, this doesn't sound that relevant, but this is the holy grail of superconductors. A superconductor at both room temperature and ambient pressure is considered the holy grail when it comes to superconductors. For decades, scientists have been in search of superconducting material, a material that doesn't experience electrical resistance, that can operate at room temperature and ambient air pressure. So far, many claims of success in this area have been made. However, none have worked out. A new paper says another contender has entered the room. Could their story be true? Have they really cracked the code? Now, although this discovery would be the potentially the greatest breakthrough in superconductors in history, scientists are skeptical that these claims are true. Room temperature superconductivity has long been the holiest of holy grails in condensed matter physics. Within the past decade, the appearance of new materials that superconduct air at relatively balmy temperatures, but only under extreme pressures, has brought a slight yet significant alteration to this goal. To be truly holy grail-like, says Physics World, a newly synthesized superconductor cannot merely carry electrical current without resistance at room temperature. It must also do it at ambient pressure for it to have practical applications beyond the laboratory, such as levitating trains, efficient power lines, or cheaper MRI machines. Really, these superconductors could revolutionize so many different technologies. So, when a paper entitled The First Room Temperature Ambient Pressure Superconductor appeared recently, well, within a few days, in fact, physicists were intrigued, though very skeptical, because others have made similar claims and it's turned out that, um, well, they were making things up. And this comes in the midst of a number of retractions and allegations of scientific misconduct. Is this yet more of those or is this something entirely different? Well, it could be. In the paper, Suk Bei Li and Ji Hoon Kim, both material scientists at the Quantum Energy Research Center in Korea, together with other researchers at the University of Korea, reported that under everyday conditions, a modified form of the mineral lead appetite exhibits telltale signs of superconductivity. These signs include all important resistance free flow of current, the expulsion of magnetic fields from the material via the Messner effect, and a critical temperature and critical magnetic field below which the superconducting transition occurs. So basically what they're saying is a quantum computer has solved yet another problem that no one could work out for years. To bolster their claims, which actually are starting to sound legitimate, a further paper appeared shortly afterwards this time written by Lee and Kim in collaboration with their Q Center colleagues. A physicist at the College of Witham and Mary in the US as well was involved. The timing of this paper's appearance and its longer author list prompted intense speculation in forums and everywhere else about the team's motives, with several commenters pointing out that in a Nobel Prize, the likely reward for this discovery of room temperature, ambient temperature, superconductivity can only be shared by three people, not six, complicating the matter because six people were involved in the discovery. Speculation aside, the second paper repeats many of the draw dropping details of the first while describing the materials synthesis in more detail, leading us to believe it may actually be legitimate. As a final piece of evidence, a video posted by the team on the 25th of July, purports to show the material Lee and Ji Hoon Kim call LK99 levitating atop of a magnet, 
This simple demonstration of the Messner effect is a staple of undergraduate physics labs. Except in this class, the liquid nitrogen required to produce superconductivity in conventional low temperature superconductors is nowhere to be seen. Is this some kind of video editing trick or is it the real deal? Well, the critics have waded in to comment. A few days after the papers appeared in this journal and mere hours after their sensational claims began circulating on social media, crushing QCenter's website in the process, experts in the field, well, they were wary. They said, calm down. Richard Green, a physicist at the University of Maryland, US, who has worked on superconducting materials since the 70s, observed that while the Messner effect video looks impressive at first glance, superconductivity is not the only phenomenon that can cause objects to levitate. If you look carefully, you see that sample two, which was levitated, has a large diamagnetic magnetization in the normal state, he said. So it could be levitated just because it's diamagnetic material. Now, in other words, he's saying these physicists are idiots um, because obviously they would know that that were the reason it were happening if they weren't idiots. So a bit of a rude comment there, really, I think, but that's what he said. Now, another physicist, Douglas Natelson of Rice University, US, highlighted apparent inconsistencies in the two papers' data on magnetic susceptibility. When the researchers placed their sample of LK99 in a magnetic field, the six authored paper states that the change in the material's mass susceptibility that is X divided by density, amounted to the density of about 36 times that of graphite. That would be exciting if it's accurate, he said. However, Natalson went on to note that what appears to be the same data also appears in figure four of the three authored paper, but with a completely different scale on the graph's Y axis. The second set of numbers is, he said, unphysical, adding that the pretty sloppy discrepancy does not encourage confidence in the results. So experts have begun to pick apart the papers to try and prove, or at least put some skeptical light on this discovery. But as of yet, they haven't been able to prove that these researchers, what they presented isn't actually true. One bright spot in this confusion is that unlike studies of high pressure superconductors, the work of Lee Ji Hoon Kim and their collaborators required relatively little in the way of specialist equipment. That won't make attempts at replicating it easy. The four-day multi-step solid-state process the Korean researchers used to synthesize the material is not straightforward. Still, Physics World says that the absence of highly specialized kit should make replication possible for more than a handful of research groups. And with so much attention devoted to finding it, a solution to the mystery of LK99 and its possible room temperature, ambient pressure superconductivity should not be long in coming. In other words, we'll know very soon whether or not this is the real deal. I think it is best we wait and see if this material and the result contained within the report are reproduced by another group in the world, said Nigel Hussey, a superconductivity researcher at the University of Bristol. He said, if so, then of course, this would be a sensational breakthrough. For the time being, though, it is simply sensational. Now, of course, uh, as you can imagine, uh, their contemporaries are probably a little jealous. They think, well, I didn't discover it. I wasn't a part of this team. So you have to accept the fact that the skepticism, some of that comes from jealousy, but some of it comes from legitimate surprise and shock that this actually could be what it claims to be, which is a fair point because... I mean, after so many people have claimed to have found the right material uh, and then it's been found out later that no, they didn't, there is fairly some real serious skepticism within the world of material physics. Personally, I think there's a very good chance that they have discovered this new material. And what I love most about all of this is that it will make my boyhood dreams come true. Basically, I'll be riding around very soon on a hoverboard from Back to the Future. It's gonna be retro, pink, have graphics on it, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. In all seriousness though, if this is the real deal, it could change so many things. Where do we start? I'm not even sure where to start. Let me know in the comments. What do you think, guys? What, what will this change? I mean, how many things are gonna be affected by this breakthrough? 
I think a lot. 